Hi, welcome back. Um, if you have not already watched how to create a frequency distribution, I recommend starting there first to make sure that you understand how to get the midpoint and the relative frequency. If you have already watched that one, go ahead and continue watching, or you already know how to get the midpoint and relative frequency and just want to see what a relative frequency histogram looks like, um, please continue watching from this point. Um, for this particular one, I did decide to go ahead and label it with the midpoint instead of um, using the class, the lower class limit and the upper class limits. Um, it's just another way, it's an alternate um, method of labeling. So with this one, we would start with the 51, 60, 69, 78, 87, and 96. And this will be the middle of our bar. Since it's the midpoint, this would be the middle of our bar. Um, that we draw for our histogram. Remember, these values do represent test scores. And the only real dis difference between a relative frequency histogram and a frequency histogram is the y-axis over here. I could have just as easily on this one labeled it with the lower limits. And that's just, again, a matter of preference. But for the relative frequency, instead of having just the counts, we have the proportion or the percentage um, that fall in each category. So we would label this as relative frequency. You could also label it as the portion or the percent, the proportion or the percent. Um, I'm going to count by 10% or 0 0.10, 0 0.20. 0 0.30, 0 0.40. So 0.10, remember, is the same thing as 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. So if you wanted to put this as percentages, that is another alternative. There's a lot of choice with these. Um, so what would we, we would do is we would take our bar. It's going to be centered at the 51. And we would go up to where we felt that it's about 6.7% of the way. So a little bit more than halfway. And then we would just draw our bar and we would shade it in. Just remember with these, with a histogram, all histograms, um, you do not want to have any gaps unless there is 0%. So if we had a relative frequency of 0%, that's the only time you should see a gap in a histogram. And so if I go up to about 16.7%, we'd be about here. I kind of made this one a little bit thicker, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this blue again. Try to straighten that up a little bit. All right, for the next one, 13% would be down just a little bit less. So we would fill this in. Our next category is the mode of the data or the one that occurs the most often. So for this one, we would go clear up to 33% or 0.33. So we would draw our bar in. Try to keep them about the same distance. When you are freehanding this, it does not turn out nearly as good as it does using technology to help you um, but do make sure that you are cognizant of the fact that there cannot be gaps unless there is a frequency of zero. So avoid leaving spaces in between these intentionally. Um, for the next category, we're at 20%. This is a nice easy one because it falls directly on the line. Okay, and then our last category would be 10%. And the overall shape or distribution of this is the same as the one that we looked at with just the frequency histogram. It is roughly symmetric. There are a few more data points to the left than to the right um, of our mode, but really it is roughly symmetric. It's somewhat bell-shaped. This would be an, a good distribution for a fair test. Um, so like I said before, the relative frequency histogram, the shape 
is the same as the frequency histogram. The only difference is in the labeling of the y-axis. Thanks for watching.